Hello and welcome to another week in our garden. Nice overcast day, very warm. We've had no rain for a day or two now, so the garden's beginning to dry out and we really need to catch up with this planting. We got a bit behind with the wet weather, but now we really need to catch up. Now this morning I've put this little bit of a frame up for the peas. These are the purple potted peas we got from Benny. 20 plants and we'll pop them around that little frame. The other thing I've popped in is the squashes. These are the butternut squashes I've popped in. I'm just about to give them a drop of water. They are walnut F1. So we'll see how we get on with those. I'll just water this line. All the rain we've had and we're having to water things in, but you must always water your plants in. Not a lot, just enough to settle them. The ground's plenty wet underneath. Did you see that one's beginning to go down a bit already. Just enough to settle them. The other thing I've put in uh, this morning are uh, three courgettes. These are called Easy Pull Gold. These also just need a little bit of water just to, just to settle them down a bit. They say the ground is plenty wet underneath, so hey. Another thing I put in this morning is from Benny are the Coco de Pampol. Put them on the frame because I wanted to keep them away from all the other beans because we want to keep the seed. Now I have watered them as you can see the standing. We had a little bit of slug problem in the frame so there's an hole or two in them but there's no slugs on them now so they'll be fine. I had to put the net on else the pigeons will be in and they'll, they'll have those straight away. I shall also put a net on the squashes but I'll do that later today because we've got quite a bit still to plant. We'll put these po purple potted peas along here. I'm just going to loosen it with the hand. I was going to use the bulb planter but the, as you can see it's consolidated that much with the rain that if we lift it out it'll make a it'll make like a, a pot shape in there and they'll not be able to get the roots out of it so I'll just do these four and then very wet in there but that's fine usually come this time of year it's as dry as dust but it will be all right i'll put the label at the end and then i pop them in twos and threes as you can see they're well rooted down good plants and i just introduce them to the cane and just cover them up like that now first off i'm just going to plant them and then i'll show you what to do when i've got a fair few in but first of all we'll just pop four in try not to disturb the root you can do it quicker by hand than what we can with the trail there you are. We've made nice plants. Remember not to squeeze them too tight, especially if your land's wet, because it will dry out and set solid. Let's have another one in there. I don't want them too tight. 
sort those out in a moment. I should plant them and then come back and show you what I do to the peas once I've planted them. I've actually put the peas in now to get them to take to the canes because if you don't they'll just fall flat and they always say if the peas fall flat and then start growing never get a good crop out of them so what we do is once you've got them at the bottom of your canes I put twiggy sticks around each one to get them started going up I just show you they just birch sticks that we've cut off the old birch tree up there and you leave them over the winter and they dry out and what I do is I lift the plant up, push the sticks in like that sometimes it's a bit difficult especially in this hard land and then I put these on if I can get that one in there you go. get that one in as well and it just holds that peel up right a bit so it starts going up the cane we'll just do the others rather difficult to do and very fiddly but it does work you just have to watch you're not pushing the stick into the roots of the pea that's it look and then bring the pea onto it one more then at this end. This has got a good thick one in, it should go in the soil nice. Yes, they have. And then bring the pea on to it and sort of thread it through carefully. And then that's the way. The other thing you must do with your peas is to ridge them. They always seem to take better if they've got the soil ridged up around them. Not easy when it's after all this rain and the soil's quite hard, but you must try and ridge them best you can. I know. Yeah, we'll have to leave the middle until it dries a little more. But I can pull some of this up. Break them a little bit. Get the stones off. That'll do for now, but they want ridging at least another inch higher than that, both sides. We'll do that as the soil dries. You see the soil is so wet. You just have to wait for it to dry out a little. But we'll tidy up. I will put a net on round those, like we did the beans just to keep the pigeons off. Uh, the other thing I want to do is put a line of beans in here. These are dwarf beans but I'll put a line on and we'll have to try the bulb planter for these because this ground's far too hard to get into now. It's drying out. When it dries out a bit more I'll loosen it with the hoe and it'll be back to normal again. I'm making the holes for these beans with my trusty old bulb planter but I'll show you when we plant them we must break the edges can you see how shiny these are with it being wet that will dry out and it will set and it will keep that root in that little bit so as we plant them I'll show you that's 15 16 17. See, it's quite solid. My old bulb planter, some people have been telling me that it's hard to watch me pushing these out with my fingers. So now I've got an old spade handle and I push them out with that now. So I'm not using my fingers so much. Here they are then nice beans and I'll show you in this one we'll do these anyway so you put it straight in 
because we've used a ball planter that's got a nice shiny edge to it so when we plant it we just go round and break it you see and that will break that shiny edge up and it won't give them like a plant pot in the soil we take some out and then we'll do a few at once it's easier to do a few at a time we'll do five and then I'll finish them to show you done and they're coming out beautifully now these are the seed we actually saved from last year and I remember eating these yellow beans in the in the winter they were very nice just go along and just firm in let me just loosen this one as well there you are and then we'll just tidy up afterwards when we're done I'll pop these other few in and then show you them done now that's that row of dwarf beans in nicely I will actually ridge them all as it dries out but I'll show you that perhaps next week the more ridged I will when we finish filming actually put a net over both rows now that's the dwarf beans in the peas are in they're all got their nice little sticks on them to get them to latch on to the canes now when we finish filming and Diane goes in to do the editing I shall put a net over all this just to keep the pigeons off else tomorrow morning we'll come down and there won't be a pig left I've got plenty of pieces of net down the bottom shed what we took off the fruit cake these are a squash seed collection that came in my Christmas stocking I think it was from Gemma so I don't know what they are they're all mixed varieties with looks of it so we're going to plant them in a sort of a circle if then later on if the need to be staked into a circle we can always do it then if not we'll let them grow as they are hopefully we'll have some pretty squashes in there but I just don't know now I've laid them out in a U shape so that if they do need circling we can still come back and put them in one big circle then but let's see get them planted see what we've got and see what happens there we go we can do these with the trowel because this piece of land here is actually quite soft i've dug a lot of manure over the years and, it, and last year this was potatoes so the ground's good enough for these I actually put a lot of barley straw in this but it's all gone but we just go down and make it half decent but there you go and this one not too deep Doesn't want it to come out, it will. There it comes. Not quite rooted too well, that one. It'll be fine. Just doing it too well. I shall finish these off and then come back to you and show you it finished. That's the uh, the squash seed collection in be interesting to see what we get but there are no other squash nearby so there'll be no cross-pollination except for in amongst the cells 
Now we've finished that little bit of planting and there's just the tomatoes to pop in. I haven't put many down to do, I think five, so it'll be just one row. Now I got some timber and I've cut these stakes for them and when I come to paint them the only paint that I could get that's nice and weatherproof was willow so we've got willow colour states this year the least is one thing is that when they're in the shed for winter we'll get them out next year at least we'll know what the tomato states are because of the colour these are the plum tomatoes, what Diana used mainly for cooking, etc. And they are semi determinate. That means that they you can let them flop if you like and they'll hold themselves up sort of. Or you can do what I do is I put them on the state and then just loosely tie the whole lot and let them all come up as one. So but we will take the shoots out the bottom lot you see the we'll take those out i'll clean those up in a minute now any that come further up now side shoots we just leave those on this particular variety and they'll make sort of a semi bush and well rooted nice plants been down the greenhouse and then they've been hardened up. Now I will plant them a little bit deeper as they go in, then this will produce roots so they'll get extra roots further up. So the spacing is a good two foot, well two foot and a bit between each plant. And I will also be putting marigolds down there as well. So the, more space in the better because we will need to walk down these rows soil amazing soil lots of manure and all sorts in this and what i'll also do i'll put them in slightly deeper than normal and what i will also do is i'll put a bottle in there as well when it's established a bit, put the bottle in so I can put feed into the bottle and it will go straight into the plant. Also, if I need just to go along with the watering can, I just pour it in the bottle so I'm not wasting it everywhere. Again, just chomp round. I'm not going to tie these immediately. I'll use the jute string and tie twice round the post and once round the plant and as they come up and then if they do get a bit bushy just twice round the stake and loosely round all the plant just to keep them going up rather than letting them fall and rot on the floor. Let's put another one in. Same again, not just away from the state. Chomp it up a bit in the bottom. It's very wet. There we go, we have this one. Same again, not I just take all these bits off the bottom and then any that come up there I'll leave. You don't want these dead leaves on anyway. There you are, I'll pick that up again in a moment. Again, nice plant. A little bit deep, I think. And I'll pop that in. Just a gentle push down. And then jump it down. Uh, hard to dead. That's it. 
just pop these other three in rather than leave them out on the bed and then we'll come back to them there's the first row of tomatoes in and the the colour of the steaks is not too bad now we've got the tomatoes at the side of them now that's our little bit of planting done for now over the week end because it's a bank holiday weekend here so I shall probably get all the tomatoes in and we'll check on the leeks etc see if they're ready I don't think they're quite ready yet but we'll see about that so that'll be it for this week many thanks for watching thank you for subscribing we do appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you next week with a lot more plants to show you that we've planted should be getting towards a full garden now the weather's holding the ground's moist let's get them in take care everyone see you next week bye now <laughs>